So here are the results of joining the all data view to the all data view, uh, matching males on the left, the first table, and females on the right, the second table. And uh, the question at the end of the last video is, what happened to the years before 1946? Well, let's write a couple of queries and actually look at what's going on. So I'm going to select everything this time from all data where name equals mark and gender equals male. So that's the data on the left in the AD1 table. And then select star from all data where name is Mark and gender equals female. So here's the data from the AD2 table. And if I execute both of those queries, we see that in the AD1 table, we have 1915, 1916, 1917, and so on, going all the way up to 2014. But in the AD2 table, we only have some rows, 1946, 1948, 1949, 50, 51, 54, and so on. So we're missing a bunch of rows. And the reason we're missing these rows is because fewer than five female babies were registered with the Census Bureau with the name Mark in the matching year. So in 1991, for example, there were less than five babies that had the name Mark that were female that were registered with the Census Bureau. So when we try to do this join here, it's trying to match rows from the table on the left to rows in the table on the right, but sometimes the right doesn't have any matching rows. And in this kind of join, which is also known as an inner join, so let me execute this first. And now let me go ahead and add the keyword inner and execute it again. It should be exactly the same results. So um, inner join and just join mean the same thing. Um, but let's see what's actually going on. So what I want is the left hand rows, even when there's nothing on the right being matched. So 81 is on the left side of the join. 82 is on the right side of the join. And so what I'm going to use is something called a left join or a left outer join. They mean the same thing. And I'm going to go ahead and execute now. And what I got back is Mark from 1915 onward. And when there was no matching row on the right, I just get null for those values. So here's where I start getting data in 1946. Either I get the matching row on the right or I get null. And that's even clearer if I go ahead and include select top 50 star comma and execute. Now on the left side, I get the matching rows from the left. On the right side, I get either nulls if there were no matches or if there was a match, I get that match like so. And then I had some additional columns after the star, and that's what these are. So this seems to work correctly for the left side. I got all of the rows from 1915 through, actually just, I'm just doing first 50. So let me get rid of that, do all of them. Yeah, so I have 1915 through 2014. That's all the years for Mark, whether there was a match on the right or not. But what if I want to match Linda? 
So Linda is a popular girl's name, but not a very popular boy's name. And if I execute this query, well, it didn't actually do the right thing at all, because uh, um, I can guarantee you that there were not 290 male babies named Linda in 1915. And if I continue to scroll down, something really funny happens in 1925. I have a row for 1925 that shows 438 male babies named Linda, and then another row that has six male babies named Linda and 438 female babies named Linda, and that pattern continues. So clearly something is not working correctly here. Well, the issue has to do with how this on clause is handled and when you get null values on the right side. So the first thing to know is that uh, if you're matching um, something on the left and there's nothing matching on the right, then it really doesn't matter what this thing is going to return. It doesn't matter if it returns true or false. If there's something on the left and nothing matching on the right, you're going to end up with nulls in this column. And notice that one of the things that we're checking for inside that clause, inside the on, is that there's male in 81.gender. That means that if there's nothing to match the row on the left, it's going to ignore the gender on the left and include the female ones on the left in addition to the female ones on the right. So basically, you get two copies of the row. You get one copy when Linda's on the left, and then you get another copy when Linda's on the right. The copy with Linda on the left is going to ignore the gender and put, put it on the left even though there's female. The one on the right is just going to match because there's a matching column. So if there's no match at all, you're just going to end up with this one row where Linda's on the wrong side and you get null on the female side. If there is a match, you're going to get two columns coming back, one where Linda's on the wrong side and one where the actual match happened where Linda's on the right side. So how do we fix this? Well, the easiest way to fix it is to repeat this condition inside the WHERE clause. So if I want to fix this, all I need to do is add and ad1.gender equals male. So that way the test is going to happen even though um, it sometimes happens up here in the on clause. So it's going to happen if there's a match on the on clause, but not if there's no match. Here it's going to happen any for, for all the rows that are coming back. And if I execute it now, so now I'm only getting back the things where I have matches on the left, and that's working correctly. And if I switch it back to mark, execute again, still working. So with that additional logic, I'm able to get all of the rows on the left along with any rows on the right if there are any that match. But what about the other case where I want to do um, match Linda? And instead of losing the years 1915 through 1924 and scattered other years, I want to get a row for every row on the right regardless of whether there's a matching row on the left or not. Well, I can do a right join to get all the rows on the right. Like so. But this is still not working because Think about the values of 81.name and 81.gender if there are no matching values on the left. So this is going to be null on the left, and this is going to be null on the left. And you know, anytime you compare null to a value, it's going to return false. So this is going to kick out all of the rows that this included where the left side has null in those columns. So how do you fix that? Well. There's a handy function in SQL called isNull, 
and it takes two arguments. The first argument is going to be a value like 81.name. And if 81, ad1.name is a non-null value, it's going to return it. So if, for example, 81.name is equal to Linda, it's going to return Linda. If 81.name is a null value, it's going to return whatever the second argument is. And I can use it here like so. I can write is null ad1.name comma ad2.name. So for the name, if AD1 is specified, it's going to use AD1. If AD1 is not specified, it's going to use AD2 instead. And I know that one or the other of them is going to be um, non-null because I know that uh, this join is either going to have a row on the left. It's actually always going to have a row on the right. So I always know here that AD2 has a value. And then I can do the same thing with gender. I can say is null ad1.gender, comma, and I'm just going to use male here. So this is going to be true if either ad1.gender is male or ad1.gender is null. Either way, I'm going to get m equal m, and so this is going to match. Now, my sort order is probably going to be wrong here as well, but I think I'll probably get rows coming back. So let's go ahead and execute it. And the right join here is significantly slower than the left join for reasons that we can get into. But anyway, so here are my nulls. The column values aren't particularly useful here. Could fix that in a minute. And then here are the ones where I actually had matching rows on the left. Here are the ones where I didn't. So let's make these column values a little more useful. Um, just like I used is null in this condition, I can use is null in the select as well. So for this one, let's use either ad1.name if there is one, or ad2.name as name. And I have to give it an alias here because um, this is a calculated value, and so it would say no column header if I didn't do that. And I'm going to do the same thing here. So this is either going to be 81.year or 82.year as year. And then 81.name count. This is this will just be null, but I can make it look a little nicer by saying 81.name count comma zero. And then is null 82.name count comma zero. It's actually probably zero to five, but we'll keep this simple for now. So let's go ahead and execute now. Okay, so now we have all the years, even when there were no matching male names. The order, the sort order is not correct though, and the reason is because ad1.year still has null values in it. What I really want to use is this is null ad1.year, comma ad2.year. I could sort by that by putting the calculation here, or I can sort just by doing this. So that's going to use the calculated value from the select clause. And here are the correct values in sorted order. So I think I should have each year only once, and it seems to. And then let's try mark to make sure that still works. So this is only going to include the rows where mark is on the right. And uh, yeah, I don't believe there were 13 women named Mark. So it's going to be the same issue as I had before. Let's go ahead and look at all the data. Yeah, it doesn't, year is now ambiguous. I actually have to. Let's go ahead and say 
I'm just going to change the name temporarily so that it's easy to deal with. So there's already a year column in this year, so this is ambiguous which year I meant before. Okay, so here I have nothing on the left. I have Mark on the right, but gender is male. Should be females on this side. And so I have to do the same thing. I have to repeat this test in the WHERE clause as well. So AND is null ad2.gender is female. Okay, so that might be all of the changes I need here. Okay, so all of these columns have male on the left, and all of these columns have female on the right. So that's working. And I have should have one row for everything that has a row on the right. So let's go ahead and simplify that and fix my year column again. and execute. Okay, so 1946 was the first year that I had a female, more than five female babies named Mark. And that goes up to 2000. Let's try Linda again. And here I had female babies named Linda all years. So for left join, I get all of the results from the left table. For right join, I get all of the results for the right table. What if I want all of the results for both tables? Which is really sort of what I want here, because I wanted to return all the years for Linda and for Mark. Um, that's called a full join or a full outer join. So in a full join, you're going to include all of the rows on the left and all of the rows on the right. If they match, you'll get them side by side. If there are no matches on the left or are no matches on the right, you're going to get null for those columns. So it's sort of like both a left join and a right join at the same time. And if I execute that for Linda, Hopefully I'll get what I just got. And so this looks like the same thing, looks correct. So that works correctly for Linda. And now let's try Mark and it should still work. And I have 1915 through 2014. So it looks like it works for both values on the left that are missing matches on the right and for values on the right that are missing values on the left.